Welcome to Kuching, the state capital of Sarawak, East Malaysia. Did you know Sarawak is the largest state among the 13 states in West and East Malaysia? If you cut out the state of Sarawak and superimpose over West Malaysia, which is Peninsula Malaysia, it is almost the same size. In today's video, we're going to explore what is it like to be living here in Kuching. So we're going to give you the cost breakdown for the different categories like food, groceries, accommodation, how much does it cost to rent over here, transportation, shopping, entertainment, and many more. As usual, we're going to go on the ground to get you the latest updated pricing. So watch on. So before that, do hit the like button subscribe to join our YouTube family and let's go! If there's a thing that you must do when you're in Kuching, it is to eat kolomi. It's Sarawak's famous dish. And this one here is John's. It comes with black vinegar. Check this out. It's a black vinegar kolomi. And he didn't add any ingredients. So this is six ringgit per bowl. And yes, I'm hungry today. So I added mine. Mine is not black vinegar. Mine is a white type. And it comes with a lot of extra ingredients. So it costs 15 ringgit per bowl for this. And we're drinking this Tessi special, which comes with the palm sugar, which is also a, a very a, a, a famous thing in Sarawak. Another dish you must have is the famous Sarawak laksa, and a bowl will be nine ringgit. Another popular local dish is kuei chap, and a dish can start from eight ringgit. Guys, we are going for dinner and guess what? We are actually going to go to dinner via that little sampan to cross the river. That's where our dinner destination is. I'm so excited taking a sampan to go to our dinner. Oh my god! We are currently in the south side and we are heading to the north. So the river actually splits both sides and in the north, that's where awesome Malay cuisine can be found. And it's so fast, it's just a one minute boat ride and now we're across the other side. We came from there, right? And now we're here and the boat ride is one ringgit per person. We're at this place called My Village Baroque for dinner. Very authentic Malay and Sarawakian cuisine. So, let's start, start off with the drinks. This is a John's Tapping, three ringgit. This is my Longan with lemon, 450 ringgit. And then we've got this special ayam. Um, I forgot the name, what's the name, but it's really apparently very good. One of the specials. This is 14 ringgit, we're eating the same thing. This is actually lamb, uh, only lamb, right? It's 20 ringgit because lamb is expensive in Malaysia. And this is their special uh, vegetable called midin. I'm not sure whether I'm pronouncing it right. This is about, I think, less than 10 ringgit. So let's dig in. Welcome to Lapau. The name means farm hut and it is a tribal fusion cooking. They use several different cooking methods from different tribes such as Kayan, Melanau and Bidayo. Our local friend brought us here for a night out and the food is amazing. So, so well done and so tasteful. And guess what? The prices for six dishes and a kettle of drink is only at 162 ringgit. On a cold, misty Saturday morning, our friends brought us to a 100% authentic Fu Chao Kopitiam to savour Fu Chao food. Many Fu Chaos were from Cebu and Bintulu, then they relocated to Kuching. Coincidentally, John's mom is Fu Chao from Cebu. We tasted delicious Tiang Pen Hu, Pak Kui, and also Kampuan noodles, which is the Fu Chao version of Kolomi. Welcome to Bako River, which is actually located 30 minutes outside of Kuching City. And amazing seafood can be caught here for a really great price. We ate really well with large prawns, fish head, bihun soup, and succulent vegetables. Oh, and this squid, which is John's favourite. So this is a local dabai, right, which is the olive that you can find in Sarawak. And what you do is you soak it in hot water for about 10-20 minutes and it becomes this and you pour some soy sauce in it. I know, soy sauce in olives. And when you eat it, it's got a cheese-like consistency to it. Look at that. It is so delicious. This is the only olive that you can eat it from this way. Mm. Guys will never guess where am I. We are actually on the sixth floor on top of a car park. And this whole place 
place is full of seafood. Amazing, isn't it? And we actually ordered four dishes. So this is a sotong goreng um, topong, and then we've got vegetables. We've got lala kam hyong, and the star isn't here yet. It's the butter prawns. It's crazy, and this is apparently a very popular spot. It's already almost nine o'clock at night, and people are just streaming in, right? And there are ways and ways of people who has already left. So let's dig in. Four dishes, including three seafood ones, only cost 91 ringgit at top spot. Imagine that. After almost a week of eating Sarokan food, we're here at Saradise. The Avante is a restaurant name and we are ordering pizza and a beef stew. The pizzas and the pastas are around 40 to 50 per dish and the mains from ranging on chicken to lamb to beef is around 50 to 70 per dish. The hearty Italian dinner comprising of salad, pizza and a main cost us 121 ringgit. Kuching offers a wide range of food offerings for your breakfast, lunch and dinner needs. At the hawker setting, you'll find there's such a wide variety of choices that sometimes you just can't choose. And dessert as well. Do you know Sarah has so many dessert options like Matterhorn, White Lady, Ice Kacang, Chendol, they have them all. If you find that it's too hot to eat out or sometimes it rains in an open air hawker center, you might want to take refuge in an air conditioned food court that you can find in the shopping malls. It's roughly around 20% more expensive in this air conditioned food court, starting around double digit, say 10 to 11 ringgit for their base prices. If you want to enjoy local cuisine at a very comfortable air conditioned setting like this cafe, you can. They serve up excellent Sarawak laksa, ayam penyet, and also nasi goreng. Delicious. Look who's here in Kuching is Zeus Coffee, our favorite brand of coffee in Malaysia. And guess what? In Kuching alone, Zeus has opened up eight different outlets spread out all over Kuching. That actually shows the huge demand of coffee in Kuching itself. As we travel around Kuching, we notice more and more cafes are sprouting out. And most of them are actually highlighting the flavor of the Sarawakan coffee beans. It's not very often you get a drink gourmet Sarawak coffee in an old shop house like this, full of uh, character. This is John's coffee latte made by Sarawakian coffee beans, their own house blend. And this is my uh, ice latte with gula apom. Gula apom is actually from their palm tree, which Sarawak has in abundance. So this palm sugar. This is one of the leading supermarkets in Sarawak and this is where you can get all your produce especially if you like to save costs and cook some food at home. They have pretty much anything that you want from locally produced stuff as well as imported goods like wine, beef from Australia and lots more. Besides Everrise, a homegrown brand, there are other supermarkets for you to shop comfortably at for your cooking and grocery needs. The property market here in Kuching is really interesting and I'm going to make some reference to KL, Penang and Ipoh. And the great thing was because we had local friends here talking about the market so we got an insider's perspective. There are a few factors that determine the property market. One of them is local demand and another one is the foreign aspects that's in that city and the last one which is important is tourism. In the case of the two big cities in West Malaysia, KL and Penang, they have a lot of local demand and foreign expats, and more importantly, tourism strength. So it's actually more robust in terms of the property market in these two cities. In the case of Ipoh, there's a lot of local support because there's a lot of rich and affluent people in Ipoh. Think of the old tin miners. That's why they're also able to prop up the property market plus the increasing growth in tourism. In the case of Kuching, which is the capital city of Sarawak, it's really interesting. There are actually a lot of old money, the rich and affluent wealthy families here that's actually coming from sea and Kuching itself and a lot of them set roots here in Kuching. Because of the robust timber and oil and gas industries, a lot of Sarawakians made their money and put their investments here in Kuching and that's evidenced by a lot of new private developments that you can see all over. So Kuching, actually very similar to Ipoh, has a lot of land. So there's a lot of landed property over here. At the same time, you're seeing very new condo developments as there's a growing tourism industry. So the price point sits something similar to Ipoh and Penang kind of price range. So for landed property, the older developments, say a two-story terrace house, three to four bedrooms, is roughly around half a million ringgit. 
and it goes up to 1 million and above for the newer developments. The condominiums, interestingly, are about the same price point as landed housing. The older developments are about four, five hundred thousand ringgit, and the newer ones goes closer to 1 million and above for the condos here. For rental, you have a fair number of options here. You can get a two or three bedroom, two bath condominium, or a three bed, four bed, two to three baths landed property in a double story terrace house for between two to three thousand ringgit per month. Kuching is huge, and as one of our local friends shared with us, the public transportation system is virtually non-existent. Like this shelter that's behind me, it looks like a bus stop, but it's not actually, it's actually a taxi stand. So the locals here actually own their own vehicles, whether it's a car or a motorcycle. And I can share with you that motorcycles are not very common here as well, because Kuching is just that big. The Malaysian branded cars are very popular here, and we tend to notice that the cars are bigger. So you're looking at 4x4 vehicles and also SUVs, because the roads are very wide and very long. If you're a foreigner living here, you can get around with ride hailing as well, like Grab. The cost is between 6 to 7 ringgit for short trips to 15 to 20 ringgit for peak hours, and that's the kind of cost range that you're looking at. One interesting thing that our local friend shared with us is we noticed that a lot of cars that are double parked on the streets, and he shared with us that it's quite common for Sarawakians to do that, and what they do is they leave their phone number on their car so that if they need to shift, you'll just have to call them. Another interesting thing we notice is the incremental amount for parking as you park longer. Apparently, that's supposed to deter people from hogging the parking lots. Welcome to the Spring, one of two main shopping malls in Kuching. And honestly, you can pretty much get anything that you want or need right here from restaurants, bakeries, shopping to all your accessories. Walking around the mall, right, it actually kind of reminds me of two malls in uh, Penang, which is Gurney Paragon and Gurney Plaza. And this Spring Mall kind of represents the best of both of these two malls in Penang. And you can find very similar brands in the two malls in this Spring Mall. Now, if you're looking for luxury high-end brands, you still need to go to KL or Singapore. However, you have Michael Kors, you got Bath & Body Works, Sephora, Coach, just to name a few. Oh, and Rolex as well, right? So you do have some brands, but not the high-end luxury brands. Now, of course, this being Sarawak, a very independent state in East Malaysia, right? It's got its own unique brands as well that you can find in this mall that you may not be able to find in West Malaysia. This is the second mall that I was telling you. This Viva City Mega Mall and it's huge. So it's got departmental store Buxton, three levels of it. And it's got Everice Marketplace, a supermarket in this mall. So lots of lots of people are here. There are plenty of gym options everywhere like this local brand Level Up Fitness where it costs low hundreds for you to have a gym membership. Otherwise, even our hotel gym, which is from Pullman Hotels, offers you great gym prizes with the pool as well. Welcome to Saradise, Kuching's idea of paradise to meet all your F&B and lifestyle needs. Saradise is where the upper middle will come and eat, meet, do business and play. Saradise kind of reminds me of Bangsa and KL and Holland V in Singapore all rolled into one except on a much, much larger scale. But Kuching has got so much land. So what's here? You've got drinking joints, cafes, restaurants, IT gadget shops, you got skincare shops, bakeries, and lots, lots more. Welcome to Carpenter Street, which is in Kuching. And this is like the older part of town, something like a Chinatown, where, why? well, the name Carpenter Street is because there's a lot of furniture shops, carpentry shops all around the whole row. Plus, there's a lot of good food, jewelry shops, Sarawak pepper shops, coffee shops, all around. This is the go-to spot for breakfast, lunch, a bit of coffee, and of course, some touristy uh, shopping as well. If you think Kuching is a boring city, you will think again. We will cover lots and lots more attractions in our upcoming retirement videos, so stay tuned for that. Okay, it's time to budget and I'm jumping right in for a foreigner couple who's retired in Kuching, costing for one person. I'm going to focus on three main categories, which is food, transport and accommodation. And if you want to have some reference to some of the other cost categories such as groceries and healthcare, you can look at my other cost of living videos such as Penang and KL. Under food category, I'm costing in for 30 days, of which 13 days are eating out at food courts 
eateries such as hawker centers. Now the basic price of hawker center food for Kolomi, for example, is at six to seven ringgit, and for food courts, it starts at double digit around 10 to 12 ringgit. So 40 ringgit per day budget is very healthy times 13 days, that works out to be 520 ringgit. For 12 meals, which is equivalent to four days of eating out per month at fancier places like cafes and restaurants, 40 ringgit per meal for one person times 12, that's 40, 480 ringgit. And finally, 13 days of cooking at home, that's estimated budget of around 35 ringgit per day, and that's pretty generous as well. That works out to be 455 ringgit, bringing the total of food budget to be at 1,455 ringgit for one person. Under transport category, these are the assumptions. It will be a fully paid Proton X50, a fantastic SUV car at 1.5 litres, a Malaysian-made car that will be shared between the couple and this will be fully paid around 80,000 ringgit. And the running cost for pump petrol will be around 5 times per month. That works out to be 360 ringgit. And for the other running costs, your insurance, which paid one time a year, maintenance paid one to two times a year, road tax one time a year, and parking every month, an estimated amount will be 340 ringgit. So 700 ringgit per month divided by two it will be 350 for one person. Under accommodation category, these are the assumptions. They are renting a three-bedroom condominium near AL Mall, which is near Minchu Garden, a very prime location. The entire rental will be 2,003 per month, working out to be 1,150 per person. For household utilities, 320 divided by 260. For internet shared, 80 ringgit for around 300 to 500 Mbps per month. And for handphone, their own individual cost will be 70 ringgit. And that works out to be a total of 1,460 ringgit. Here's the consolidation for the budget for this foreigner retiree couple and they rent a three-bedroom condo and drive a fully paid and Malaysian-made car. For total expenses, it will be food, 60% dining out, 40% home cooked, 1,455 ringgit. For household items, 100 ringgit. For your cleaning equipment, your own personal effects. For transport, 350 ringgit for the running costs. For accommodation, the rental and everything in will be 1,460 ringgit. For healthcare, basic healthcare and GP consultation, 100 ringgit per month. And under others, where you have shopping, some lifestyle gym and all the other added ons around 500 ringgit and total will be 3,665 ringgit per month and it takes around 838 US dollars and these are the things not catered, the price of the vehicles, the medical insurance in home country and any travel in and out of the country and any interstate travels, these are not covered in this budget. So if you notice, one can live actually rather well in Sarawak at a budget that's less than 1,000 US dollars, having your own transport, having lots of space and eating well, even have time to go for shopping and gym and other lifestyles and attractions as well. So it's a fantastic place to stay at a very affordable budget. Did you know Sarawak has their own retirement program called the Sarawak Malaysia My Second Home? We have given you a breakdown of the cost of living over here in Kuching, Sarawak. And we have given you a foreign retirees budget so far. In our next video, we are going to cover about retirement more extensively and we have a special guest that will share with you more details on the ground. So stay tuned to our channel and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos. Do hit the like button, we certainly appreciate it and see you in our next video.